And good afternoon. How are we going? Let me just make sure everything's coming up correctly. And, and good afternoon. Okay, that is all looking good. How's everyone going today? Just going to do that. Okay, good afternoon. How are we going? I hope you are having a fabulous weekend. It is um, a beautiful day down here in Canberra. It's sunshiny, it's lovely and warm. Um, the, um, the office is always a little bit chillier, but I've got my lovely coat on. And quite honestly, this makes most of um, most of my cold problems go away. It's just enough to keep those shoulders warm, which is what I find I need. So I hope you guys are having a great day today. And I can see we've got Naomi White and Val Hillier here with us. Thank you for joining us. Um, excuse my, um, my sound today. I'm a little stuffed up. I'm just, um, Friday afternoon. I just sat there and started feeling worse and worse and worse as the day, um, bled on. It was quite amazing. Um, so just fighting my way through a cold at the moment. But today we are working on the next of the block of the month, which is the lovely block. And we are up to block six. We are halfway there. So block six, and I have done halfway um, to showing you how I'm going to put it together because I'm going to demo that this afternoon as well and we've got Nancy Cook here as well thank you for joining us um, is um, one of the blocks where we do four totally separate entities um, I'm also going to re-demonstrate how I quilt through and I am using the ASR the accurate stitch regulator from Janome. And look, it is a little getting used to using one of the stitch regulators, um, but it also makes such a difference. And I can't wait to show you how we put these together then to create a full on block. So let's get stitching. On the screen I've got my wash away thread here and I'm just going to come through and load up my fabric and my fabric's a little bit bigger than I need but that's okay and the first thing that I'm going to do is I've loaded in with my design the basting stitch. And we love the perfect basting stitch just because it stops everything from moving within the hoop. And of course I've got the wash away thread on there because it's just the easiest thing to get rid of. And it means that it doesn't matter about having those stitches underneath in the center. So it really is just a win-win situation. Okay, so threading up my machine. And I'm just going to move my hoop for threading. And that's just so it doesn't bump the edge of the hoop. And then we can start our stitching. Okay, and we've got 
Um, we've got Joanne Stoddard with us on YouTube. Thank you for joining us, Joanne. We've got Michelle Reynolds with us and Angela Taylor Seddon as well. Thank you so much for joining us. And Joanne, I, I know what you mean about the basting stitch. It is just amazing. And I mean, I sat there this morning and, um, and was removing the extra stitches from the basting stitch. And it's just um, so easy to do. So what we're going through is we're starting with our first color, of course. And how's everybody's weekends been? Yesterday was a little bit of a no-go for me, um, just because I was feeling so crappy. I ended up sitting down in the afternoon and um, was just watching a um, a true true crime sort of a thing and um, and sort of just zoning out. But I am starting to feel a little bit better, and I've had a great morning this morning, just getting some stuff done. Okay. And I still, it really, it's amazing just how much I love sitting here watching these designs. Um, sort of just, just materialize and come on through. Now, an interesting one that we had this afternoon um, and I don't know when, I'm assuming, I don't know whether it happened yesterday afternoon or whether it happened this morning. I went out onto my deck to put something away and I ended up, there was a, a red rooster delivery, like it, just a single burger. Um, now we don't get a lot of, you know, food delivery or anything like this where somebody's going to be offering us freebies. Um, so I'm really interested. So, you know, I went out and checked with Edward and checked with the girls and then I called up Cameron and um, because he's still off house sitting. And it's like, what in the hell is happening? So I, I can only assume that it's been delivered to the wrong house. But we have ended up with a Red Rooster burger, cold Red Rooster burger on our, um, on our front deck. <laughs> Okay, Joanne was off to the Gimpy Quilt and Craft Fair yesterday. Oh, wow. So what did you find most inspiring, Joanne? Um, that's, always, that's always my question. Like, I love seeing what other people are inspired by. Now, one of the things that I have been inspired by um, is some 3D stuff. And because of that... I am creating, and I've just had some fabric printed up, and I'll show you the fabric that I've had printed up. So I've had this panel printed, and I've also had this panel printed. And what I'm going to do with them is actually come through and do some um, 3D flowers and create a piece of wall art. So that is coming up in the next few, um, few weeks as well. Oh, needle turn applique, lovely. I have never been able to, um, to have a good vibe for doing the needle turn applique. I mean, I love it. But that was one of the reasons that I initially um, went and got permission to do the floral windows because mum gave me a needle turn kit. Um, and, um, and yeah, had to, had to work out how in the hell to do it. Um, 
Yes, that sewing machine print is amazing, and I can see both Joanne and Nancy have um, have commented on that one. And what I'm going to do, the other ones that I'm looking at having printed, I'll see if I can find, because um, the concept will go across many. But I've had, I've had, excuse me, snotty nose. Um, so I've had ten of each of these printed. And then I'm also done, and I just need to find, the other ones that I've been inspired by are these two animals. And these two animals and so I am looking at having them having these guys done as well and then but the, the premise is then I'm going to show you how to use a whole lot of different things such as lace and um, shrinky fabric and 3D applique and all those sorts of things and we're going to decorate them ourselves um, so that you're left with a beautifully quilted panel that is a piece of 3D art as well. So that's what I'm going to be doing this week. Oh Bargello quilt! My my sister's got a Bargello quilt that Mum did for her, um, and I always love the. Um, I'll try and find a picture of a Bargello. <coughs> um, the um, The Bargello quilt, and I think this is the one that Mum did for for Leanne. So the premise of it is that you only have to use a couple of colours, but they wave it around and all different sorts of things. Um, and I'll show. So the premise of Bargello is this sort of thing here. Um, and yeah, I know Mum did one for Leanne and the concept of it is just superb. But I know she swore a couple of times at getting it all sort of done correctly. Oh, there will be freestanding lace. Absolutely, Joanne. Um, that is definitely. Um, and it's going to be a lot of different techniques just to show us all the different things that we can do with our machines. Um, and I'm even thinking for those of you who have a cutting machine of doing a couple of the flowers or leaves with the cutting machine as well. But yeah, it's all going to um, to be lots of different textures because I think that's one of the things that makes the world go round. Like I, I love texture in whatever I do. And one of the things that really sold me on the, um, particularly the sewing machine panel is that it has a little butterfly and there will be a butterfly done in lace um, and I love the fact that because it's got the flowers on there our flowers can sit on top and it all just becomes texture then on what we do okay so you can see here that we're doing the um, we're on to our second colour, which is our green, and it's doing the actual candle wick blocks. And that's what I mean when I say texture. It is 
like for me everything really is about the texture I've got keep on getting feeds up at the moment my friends of mine have gone to um, to Europe and they you know posting images from um, from all the different museums and everything like that and um, and yeah it's it's one of those interesting things where you like all I think is just how much well AI got in trouble in the Vatican because when you look up and see the Sistine Chapel your mouth's open and when my mouth's open words come out of it so I got shushed in the Sistine Chapel when I went many many years ago um, but I also I look at some of these paintings and all I want to do is start um, you know is is touch them and see the texture and <coughs> so yeah they really don't like me but I had a lovely week this week I went to um, I went up and spent a couple of days with dad <coughs> sorry guys I apologize um, and um, and that was fantastic we went him and we went and we you know looked at getting him a, getting him a new mobile phone and he just he's having so much trouble committing to the concept of a new mobile phone because the old one works fine um, so it was really really interesting um, the only reason he needs a new one is because he wants to be able to hook it up to his hearing aids um, and you know it's a three hundred dollar purchase he's fine and uh, but but yeah just that whole oh actually having to spend the money was just hurting him okay let's come through and thread up for our next color and our next color is of course going to be or our final color in this one is going to be our pink So. Oh, I like the idea of some Trapunto. That's a good idea. Okay. And it's not bad really. I'm up to I've I've done some forward stitching on um on on some of these blocks so that I can make sure I get to show you all the extra bits as well. And I'm only just up to finishing my first spool of thread. And the scarily enough, the one that I'm running out of first is the orange, which I thought was quite interesting. So on to my second round. And there is just something about the way all these beautiful satins all come together. So now I got to spend time with Dad and then I went off and um, managed to have breakfast with my sister another morning so that was lovely. Um, we did um, For the, for the first time since all the drama with the niece who stole a lot of money off my father. 
Uh, Joanne's asking, so that would mean that we need at least two spools of each colour. Yes. Yes, you need two spools of that. Um, and um, so we did... So the first, the first time since I've seen her since all of that went down, um, and on Thursday, just as I left, Dad was having a, I think the police call it a reconciliation meeting, um, and that's fine. I didn't go to that, and I didn't need to go to that. This was about Dad, um. But, yes, it did not go well. This young lady has no concept whatsoever of any drama that she's caused or anything like that. And her comment back to me was, I don't know why everybody's so mad about it. Like, you know, Grandad had the money. And my darling father is just, he's very much on the God forgives side of things and so should I. And we've tried to explain that God can forgive as much as he wants. Um, but, you know, a little bit of humility and things like that would be lovely and, you know, just because you're forgiven, you don't have to let these people back into your house. But that's another one. So it's always lovely catching up with it with family and everything, but sometimes you just end up going home more stressed than when you leave. But it's been 12 months since we've had him in his new house, so everything is going well there. Oh, and I love the way all these colours are coming together. Thank you, Nancy. I just, I just love the way, the, and the way the satin works in with the Candlewick stitch. Now, somebody sent me a photo of what they've done. And I don't know what in the hell I've done with it. So if you are the person who sent me the photo of these done with a variegated or multi-tonal thread um and just all of the all of the blocks done in the single color but just using that multi-tonal thread send it through to me again because it looks stunning and i i really thought i'd saved it so that i could post it but i've got no idea what i've done with it it was it was back in may um, while we were on the road and I've just got no idea whatsoever other thing the girls and I did while we were up at dad's because the girls came with me they've been on holidays for the last two weeks is we went and um went over to Daiso. Uh, Daiso is a, it used to be a $2.80 store and it's much more expensive than that now, but it's always fun to go and spend a little bit of time looking through. So we got <coughs> um, you know, we go in there and they got lots of little bits to make up a birthday basket for their brother um, just with the cooking stuff. And then we got um they each got a pair of, of, um, of, you know, nice fluffy socks. And I swear to God, it's the best, um, best place to go and spend time. But it was just so much fun to just go and do stuff with, with my daughters and just have that little bit of fun. Okay. And now we need to do the inside here.
And as with most things, it is all about the layering. So, you know, we do the orange first and then we layer the green over that using it to cover up any excess seams. Then we layer the pink over that and we're doing up the excess seams as well. So this last bit of satin stitching is covering over our last set of seams. Had an interesting one this week. Um, I sat a just like an online test on English comprehension and and reading and math and things like that. And <clears throat> so you get the you get the results back, and the feedback it came to me was that you know I've got great English, great comprehension. But I often don't look at, or I don't read things clearly enough thinking that I know what's going to happen. Um, and that is absolutely true. But gee, nobody likes hearing the, you know, the average things about themselves. Then this afternoon, I'm sitting here setting my machine up for what I'm going to show you this afternoon. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm pressing the button over and over again saying, yes, I know what foot I've got on there. No, I stopped. I didn't put one thing correctly. Just one itty bitty little thing. Okay, so our stitching is now done. Let's come through over to the workbench and I'm going to take a bowl with just some water. And you can see I'm putting this on fairly liberally because I want it to work quickly and I am just wetting down my um, those basting seams and then I'm setting it aside so that the water has time to permeate and go through. Now set that aside and I'll go back to the first one and I've got my heater on here oops um not my heater my iron and I'm gonna iron my backing fabric and you guys know I love using um all of my cute pieces as my backings and then I'm going to take off now I'd already taken off the backing fabric on this block um, as in the stabilizer so that means I'm going to use my thang to get underneath and remove the back of the basting stitches the other blocks were actually easier because they are the they already had the stabilizer on them I hadn't taken the stabilizer off the others excuse me while I blow my nose again for you guys okay so I'm going to use the backing fabric just to iron those blocks because they do have still have a reasonable amount of water on them just that first time so that it doesn't scald the fabric once we get 80 90 percent of the water out we're all good and I can just iron them normally Now, how many of you do free motion quilting? 
I've got my wadding here and I'm going to pop that behind and loving the fact that I get to use up some of my scraps of wadding and then I've got my fabric and once I've got those three pieces together I'm just going to come through and over to my machine ready to do the free motion quilting. Now I have the ASR foot on my machine which means it is hooked in to the machine itself and free motion it does take a little bit of getting used to. So grab a panel see which way you work best. For me I work best going backwards a little bit and you can see what I mean here. Uh, Joanne the best way to do this is to have a little bit of booze. Um, you know booze makes everything better um, and you can see there I'm turning my fabric around so that I can better control it but what the ASR did it does is it means that my stitches are the correct length all the way through and it changes the length of that depending on how I'm moving my fabric or how quickly I'm moving my fabric around. <laughs> and Michelle's saying no, no, quilting in the hoop with the embroidery mode, thank you. So this project was made before I developed the quilt as you go method. Exactly, you need a glass of red to relax and look it's hell on the shoulders and the fact that you could then get stressed out about it doesn't help either. So you can see I haven't trimmed these blocks yet so I'm quilting them first then I'm going to come along and I'm going to trim them and two sides are going to be trimmed at one inch the other two sides are going to be trimmed at half an inch each. So you can see I've got my two one inch sides. Then I'm going to come through now I know that looks weird at the moment but all will be revealed when we get to putting them together. And I can see we've got Kathy Chillingsworth with us as well. Thanks for joining in, Kathy. Okay, almost finished trimming. Okay. So these are my four blocks. Now let's come back to the machine and working on the half inch side. And I've got the one inch strip that's going to show on the front side and then I've got the backing piece which is one and three quarters inches. 
this is how I do my quilt as you go method so once again put the heater on uh, sorry put the iron on and I'm just going to fold that one and three quarter piece so that it is ready for us to use and the the color for the front that I've used is a calf facet and I bought it at Christmas when I was planning all of this um, and it looked a little bit brighter I'm I'm loving it more as we go along but I really thought it was a little bit brighter when um, when I bought it but yeah it doesn't suck okay so I've got my blocks I've got my fabric and now we are ready to rock and roll okay so let's come over to the machine and working with the half inch side so our one inch sides are our outside so we're working with the half inch side and on one of those pieces I'm going to put a front and a back piece make sure that on the back piece the fold is not where we are stitching if that makes sense and I've got a quarter inch foot on there I'll come in a little closer okay so quarter inch foot and then I'm going to grab my little no heat um, pressing tool kind of like a letter opener press that flat and then flip that second block over and attach it and I've got Tracy Tracy watching as well thank you for joining us my dear okay now I do this and then I press that out as well I do the two halves of this and then I will come through and I will pop on my um, my top stitching foot and come through and again this is what I'm going to show you in a second with the um, with joining the two halves together so what you want to do here is just make sure that inside seam is as flat and as nice as you can possibly get because we don't have a lot of wiggle room we just need to make sure that that is just as flat and as perfect as we can get it now you could hand stitch this but we know that's never going to happen in my world Kathy's saying no free motion for her just too hard I get it Kathy I do okay And all we're now going to do is once you've pressed that is come along okay. 
and using that top stitch foot and you don't have to use the top stitch foot you can but it makes it a hell of a lot peep easier for somebody like me just keeps the needle in the right position and what I'm loving as I'm going to show you the back here is look at how pretty that is okay so we
Okay, we got sound again. Okay. So, what we should have, and I can take that foot off, but, so this is the foot that we're going for and it's the SD foot. And then all we are going to do, make sure your stitching is in the center. and make sure at each stage that this part of the foot here lines up with the edge of that fabric there and that this closure is folded over you do those things you should have a great result and you can see I'm going petty wampus here and I apologize for that okay and what I'm left with is a beautifully finished block. Now, you can see there where I said I was going cattywampus, but it's still caught everything as we've gone along. And what we've got on the other side is a beautiful block. Okay. So, Okay, sound is back. Okay, thank you. Um, so what I'm left with is my finished block. I'm thinking that is looking lovely. What do you guys reckon? Um, very happy with how that one has turned out. So that is block six. Um, what I do notice here is I've just got a couple of threads that have come through that I need to trim away. Um, but very very happy with that one okay thank you all so much for joining me today next week we are going to work on the double zip pouch remember the double zip pouch is and pay attention to the lining i've got on that side look ma nothing in there different lining different side um, and so far these guys have been used, I'll be making mine for cuttering utensils for traveling, um, for, and for the girls to keep in their school bags, but I've also been using them for period packs and they're great as glass, glasses holders as well, because they will hold two pair of glasses. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us until next week. Have a stitching day guys. Bye.